Hi again, folks. Right, um, so we looked at the context, characters, and the plot. Uh, we uh, This will be a much shorter video, I hope, <laughs> um, about conflict in the play. Now, the thing about drama to understand is that conflict is really the driving thing behind all drama. Um, whether that's conflict between characters or conflict between maybe ideas or, or whatever it happens to be, you know, show me a play, I'll show you the conflict that's, that's, uh, that's underlying everything you can make the same argument for a lot of literature but it's it's absolutely nailed on the case i think for um for drama so a quick thought about some of the conflicts that exist and again this is one of these things where you're going to want to remember that you could be asked about any of this and if it were me in your position i would be making sure that as well as a set of notes on each character and the the plot summary that i talked about in the last video i would have a, a one page note for the different conflicts that I could see, and on each, and it'd be a one-page note to try and make it manageable, so that I could I could internalise it. Um, and on each note, what you'd probably be looking to do is have at least maybe four or five examples from key bits in the play where you think you'd be able to argue. You know, I've identified X conflict. If we look at this bit of the play, we see it manifest in this kind of way. If we look at this bit of the play, if you've got four or five examples, you'll always be able to answer the final question in the exam if your conflict comes up. So examples of the kind of conflicts that we see, there's obvious conflict between individuals and they manifest in different ways and come up at different points. Um, the most obvious one is Phil and Alan, but that's also a manifestation of the class conflict which is part of one of the themes, things about maybe like class differences or themes of opportunities. And as I've said in videos and in classes before, there will be quite a lot of overlap in these things, and there should be, because themes and conflicts and characters don't exist in isolation in a text. They're all interconnected. So your notes would logically then all be sort of interconnected in the same kind of way. The same bits will appear across different pages. So conflict between individuals to look for, you know, as I say, one of them is Phil and Alan. You could certainly make an argument for saying there's conflict between um, Hector and Phil and Spanky. It's a bit more subtle at points and it kind of varies as, as, as it goes through. Um, there's other conflicts as well, and again, some of these could be talked about as, as character conflicts or as, as thematic conflicts. So between the generations, look at the different uh, views of Lucille and Sadie. Look at the different attitudes of the Slab Boys and Willie Curry. But again, you know, that's a conflict that might come up as a theme. And that theme might be, in fact, I think this came up one year, about attitudes to authority. It either came up in an exam or a prelim. Um, how the, the theme of different attitudes to authority or something like that is represented in the play. So one of the ways in which that's done is, is conflict. Conflict between people in positions of authority and people who don't have it. Willie Curry um, and the Slap Boys, for example. Other things that you see are uh, some of the more obviously sort of thematic ones include things like this conflict between dreams and reality. Um, on expectations and, and reality or however you wanted to phrase it. Again, it's a theme that comes up quite a lot in these kind of questions, but it's fundamentally about conflict. It's about asking um, about the, the difference between what people think could happen or what people hope will happen or want to happen and what act is actually going to happen. And it's important maybe to kind of point out there, we're not necessarily talking about the difference between what people think will happen and what ends up happening. That's, that's part of it. But in a lot of cases, this kind of conflict, you know, the thing about, for example, Hector and, Lu and Lucille, that conflict between dreams and reality, it's not like at the end when we find out Hector doesn't get Lucille that this is some kind of surprise and we're suddenly realising this. We always know that's there. It's not like we're really surprised that Phil doesn't get into the art school because by then we've sort of been like primed by various bits of the text. So a lot of the time when you're looking at this dreams versus reality thing, what you're really looking for, it's not just things that don't happen to come true. It's things that certainly on maybe more than one reason and with a bit of thought become clear that they can't come true or they're extremely unlikely to come true. Um, that's where you actually start to see that conflict between dreams and reality. So again, something that's worth looking at, something that's worth gathering notes up on, look at the different ways in which people come into conflict with each other, people come into conflict with reality, ideas come into conflict with each other. Um, and you should find that if you start kind of building up sets of notes on that, as I say, that replicate bits of notes on other themes and other characters, all absolutely fine. But if you can do this, 
you'll start to find that the prospect of that 10 mark question at the end of the play is much, much less daunting.